Hello, 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 everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode of UXP Plus Workshop presented by Escape. I'm KCP, and together with me today is LY4. So, Hi everyone, the coaches for today. So it has been three weeks since we last streamed for you guys, right? For the workshop, and the last I did was with Sana. So anyway, remember that there is a giveaway going on right now and the link will be dropped into the chat box admin please post the link of the giveaway yeah and all you need to do actually is just to follow the skate facebook like and share the post and tag your friend and maybe you like my page also you like my four page we bias a bit take you all for the winners yeah. so you'll give the winners uh, announcement at the end of the this stream lah. So also those of you who want to stand a chance to play with LI4 and at the same time I'll be giving feedbacks after on uh, there's still chance all you, all you need to do is just to sign up and check your email for instructions. So uh, if you really want any of those go and ask the admins right down there below alright. So okay so anyway uh, please share, share and tag your friends lah, okay. And later on, Skate will be contacting you guys for the ML details, okay? So, shall we begin? <coughs> so, before that, right, uh, today we'll be talking about the early mid late game of EML. So, for this uh, workshop, we'll be talking about uh, actually like what you should focus on in the early game, the mid game, and the late game. So, basically, uh, to me or to most professional players, right, actually, uh, Mobile Legend is more of a early game game, so in the mid late game, there's not much things you can really do apart from you know, uh, five out of five five options or lesser even compared to the early game, because the Mobile Legend in the early game is all like once you get like two kills, you can snowball the game and win right. So that's one of the main pointers la, regarding this workshop. So. In this workshop later on, I will talk a lot, a lot about uh the early game. I will give a brief, a very brief, generic ideas of the mid and late game. So and today because I got I put in too much effort for you all, uh, like uh need to need to you know need to listen more because uh when meta changes right, the early game, mid game, late game, the ideas is still there. Maybe some heroes you have some different changes to play. Maybe uh, meta changes, maybe as a mid player you have to go and play side lanes or you have to play even support. So all this, we throw aside, we throw aside. We, this is one of the most important uh, workshop I feel, where in a way if let's say ch uh, meta changes or even if, even if you want to uh, change to another mobile game, okay, this is the best workshop to learn all about the early game how we should execute the early game, the objective of the early game, so things like that. So, when we are talking about it, try to, you know, absorb it and then think that, hey, uh, it's a good information for you all, and I hope you all can learn something out of it. And yeah, let's go. So, for the next slide, right, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am KZP, also the captain for Resurgence, and yeah, uh, we'll be playing the MPL S6 soon. And yeah, I am uh, enjoying doing all this workshop for you guys to teach you all this. Uh, I don't want to do so much introduction really because today we'll have a, uh, you know, a time constraint. I try to talk as fast as possible. But at the same time, I, I want you guys to, you know, uh, absorb the things that we, we taught you guys. Lah. Okay, so LY4, take it away. Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm... LY4, also uh, from Resurgence. I'm actually a. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't call myself an all rounder, <laughs> but I played fighter competitively before. Uh, but I'm more of a hyper carry player. So later through the slides, uh, especially the assassins and marksman slides, I'll be going more deep uh, into those slides. So yeah, let's go. Okay. So basically, right, all the slides later on, we will try to score ourselves. We will try to top the negativity of our points. Maybe one or two slight things that we did well. But we'll try to talk the mistakes that we do so that uh, y'all don't follow the mistakes. Rather, y'all don't... You can do anything else, but don't do those mistakes. 
uh, that would be better. But we also try to praise ourselves, you know. <laughs> but Singaporeans cannot be praised, so let's go art. So okay, so for this unit, right? Uh, the best way to deal the game using different roles of heroes in terms of what you need to do in different section. Okay, so for this EML, right? Early game, I'll be talking very specific. I'll be talking even from the first minute to the uh five six minute onwards. And then the mid game I'll talk a bit, the late game I'll talk a bit. Why? Cause you think about it, right? You watch compi, you play, you realize that the mid the late game will always be the same shit. You either, you know, push them or you defend yourself. So which one you wanna be? Ah so it ups to you, okay? Ups to you guys, ups to you guys. So the early game right, we'll talk even on why we why we start off this way, why why we want to make a decision, you know, maybe like for maybe example LI is gonna take their rate, right? Then okay, uh LI go and take the rate, this kind of thing. But he will explain why lah. Yeah, like maybe maybe uh uh he just like to steal people's rate or what, I don't know. So for that uh we shall go on because too many videos guys, too many videos. I can't I can't I don't think today is uh uh can talk all, all of the things that y'all can absorb lah so try to try to focus a bit okay so for this ML right uh talk a bit of this ML uh, ML has an average lifespan of 20 minutes per game so uh 20 minutes is considered actually a uh, quite a long time already because chances are uh we'll we'll know whether we will lose the game within six to twelve minutes and uh in within six to twelve minutes all the snowballs will continue so it's either they make mistakes or you make a very very good play that no one ever does and yeah you won the game lah so usually 20 minutes especially games that both sides have mistakes right if both sides has mistakes then both sides will definitely uh have a longer span of uh, lifespan of game lah which is like 30 minutes even yeah, I, I don't like to play a uh, long game. I'm a uh, early game player. I play until 8 minutes. I actually quite tired already. So, uh, ML suits me a lot. And, okay. So, for this, I'll break it to early game, mid game, late game, right? So, the early game, right? When the game start, right? When you went in after the loading, ah, uh, when the sound come out, Welcome to Mobile Legends! Oh, that's the time that the early game starts already. That's the time when professional players uh, mix their movement, like uh, run to a position to get an advantage out of their you know position for the team uh, why because when uh when the games just spawn and you just walk to the position right you may actually prevent a good gang which end up the you all can uh regang them and then win the team fight or you can you know uh from that position abuse and outlane your opponent like maybe you're a jaw head and then you came to uh, this bush and they don't know that you're in this bush, they just walk into it and then you just first kill, kill it. Or don't have to kill it, just make him low, then he go home. And then when he come back, he can't even touch the creeps. That's how good uh, early, how good and important early game is. So for the mid game, when your lowest level player reaches level 4, right? Most likely, uh, I calculated it's around 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, in the winning and losing game, I mean, it depends. So, if let's say, uh, they abuse and go and touch one of your side lanes and make sure that their net worth is even lower than the tank that has a mask, right? Then, uh, the, the mid game will tend to uh, stretch further and further. Lah. But if that's the case, then the opponent will have a lot, a lot, a lot of advantage because their side of the team, right, they are already in the mid game phase where their lowest level is level 4 and they already are uh, doing mid-game objective things which uh, most of the time y'all will lose because like your tank will be like maybe level 3 your side laner also level 3 then your side laner cannot uh, leave the map to scout so it all relies on the support it all relies on the hyper carry and the other side of the uh, fighter so that's it so the mid-game uh, uh, just to clarify with you guys right is not in general 10 people are in the mid game okay so how this mid game work is uh let's say my team level 4 first then i will my team will transit into the mid game earlier than their th that the op your opponent but if the opponent uh is still level 2 until 6 minutes right because he don't want to buy mass he's stubborn okay 
he learned from LI4, he don't want buy mask. Then he will yeah just uh stay in the early game lah, which I mean you will continue to lose out lah when people already transit. So uh so you all need to clarify with this uh, understanding of this mid game for each team uh. It's not like mid game for both sides. But in the even game, of course the mid game transition is the same. Right? Unless you really can abuse the early game, right? To the extent that you can strand, uh, stretch their their early game. And then while you all transit, they are still in the early game phase. I tell you you're a winner already. Uh, but don't go and don't win until you all go and throw every time 1v5, uh, 1v4. Very easy for the for the opponent to also get back the shutdown straight and then win the early game, uh, win the mid game and transit into a late game even faster than yours, perhaps. Okay? So for the late game, right, is when the first slot appears, which is at 9 minutes lah. So the, the late game is just whoever gets the lot and then knows how to do creep management and how to, you know, get have the snowball lead, how to gank people, how to get towers, this kind of thing. So how? Later, I will briefly tell you all also. But regardless of uh, how to play mid and late game, uh, honestly speaking, uh, I got thought, I got, I got think about it when I was doing these slides, and I was like, actually, no matter what, uh, this part really you all have to go and play more, because the more experience you have in the late game, then the more better decisions you have, and each different games will have different decisions to make, unless your decision is really one of the kind lah. Okay. So, yeah, so clarify a bit about the mid, uh, the early transit to mid game for the understanding, ah. Uh. Okay, next. So, for the early game, right, okay, we'll be talking about the top and bottom lane heroes first. So, for this, uh, top and bottom lane heroes, which is the fighters for this beta, right, you'll be currently the fighters, lah. So, I will use Tamus, Masha, and Cho for the explanation. Uh, what what is their power spy level in terms of heroes objective and what what it needs to be done in the early game okay so for all these videos right I, I try to take the time and watch all their streams and then try to crop uh crop out and then try to play so if the quality isn't as good as you think or or whatsoever then I'm sorry about it but uh there will be no volume because I need to do a voice over yeah I voice over and then make sure that you all understand what they are doing okay so uh you want to start off with one question ly4 uh i think just move on la. let's go okay let's, let's start the go video. let's start the video okay let me mute my video first and let's go so for this we will be talking about tamus first from sana so what sana did from the start at early game is actually to clear the way fast why because he needs to get the level two so for Tamus, right, the most important is what you do during your level 2. So for this case, right, he just want to take his gold crab, which uh, is not a very, very greedy play, but it's just a bit of too safe of a play. But as you can see, he is now trying to contest the opponents because he knows he can win. So, and anyway, Sana is just very good at Tamus. So uh, I, I will believe in whatever he is doing most of the time like, when he's playing Tamus, not other heroes. So... Uh, as you can see, right, he's trying to make the opponent low, as low as possible, and get a lead out of it. So, what is the lead here, right? If you can see, uh, he can rotate first. By able to rotate is actually a very smart move. But the thing is, uh, the opponent all also come, come over and try to, you know, uh, fight with it. So, it is not very, uh, very strong for uh, Tamus to jump in without any teammates. So, when he got a teammate, right, and when the opponent shares the damage for the Tamus, the Tamus can actually do a lot. Because actually his damage in the early game is incredible. It's just that the opponent didn't actually gang, like, you know, aim at him all three players. If at that moment they gang him, then most likely he will lose or he will die. But either way, the team fight will have been won because it's a Tamus. So, as you can see, right, since he win with all the laning, he can actually, you know, uh, outlane this Sivana. He can just, you know, he rotate first, he win Sivana and lane first, and when the Sivana is near him, he put pressures onto this Sivana. See? No wonder he's my fighter, eh? Yeah. I think the other play he could have done. Okay, let's say if you are playing like a, 
a lousier team. Like usually now teams they start with invading their raid. But let's say if their team, if his team didn't invade their raid, right? After he cut the level one wave, ah, uh, the other play he could have done was that he own self go and take their raid. So this is something y'all can know also. Uh, mm. Y'all playing Tammuz. Yeah. Actually, almost all the fighters can uh, cut wave lah. So not just mm. Tammuz. Eh, but the thing is because of the creep ah. Uh, uh, the patch of the the patch says for the side lanes, right? The creep actually move faster, so it is very hard for all these fighters to actually manage to control the three with uh three creep that is cut. Any person that slow the fighter a bit can just you know, uh stop the cut already. So you have to start off with playing the wave, when it kisses in the mid, as in mid of the lane. So from there you can still go and you know, uh fight at their rate. You are still you are still okay because. From how people rotate, right? If the people in the mid start lane and in mid, they will go to blue buff, and then from there they might clear wave or go red. But when they're doing the blue, right? You're actually done with your first wave as well. So you can from there, uh, walk towards their red and scout for better position. So, luckily for him for this game, he opponents went in too deep. Then he have to make a different position or different decisions. So as you can see, ah. He's transitioning to a late game fighter lah in a way. He keep trying to get go, get farm. He want to go for damage the most. So when the score is eight into one lah, you will know that actually the game is not easy to come back. And why? Because uh, Sana actually did a lot in the early game. Uh, all he needs to do is to go into the team fight earlier than the opponent. Uh, get ahead. Uh, put a lot of pressures on the lane right. You be he be he basically won his own lane, so technically speaking, you don't have to worry about his lane and focus the mid and uh, bottom lane. Or if you really want to abuse it, you can bring him to team fight right. With enough crowd control, uh, y'all can surely kill uh people lah. So in so when before they are transiting to the mid game phase right, what he did is he's trying to clear the wave as soon as possible so that right, uh when the mid fight he can rotate easily. So for this, uh, Kimi, he just, um, he just not didn't expect that lah. So what a not a bad Tamus lah. Luckily, I, you very lucky. He very lucky that, you know, he he stream like this, wonderful player. So as you can see, right in the early game, as a Tamus, you control him lah. You kill Kimi. You pressure so many people to coming top. Uh, you even take their red. So I think this is the uh, the best you can get lah. Now you even kill uh as a tamo stop you even kill Lunox right. So what he did is he actually know his his power spike at level two. So as you can see from here, uh when when he he wanted he could have went for the raid or you know cut the wave, but he he knows that there is no raid because the higher went for the raid. So and opponent went to you know come and fight. Maybe he wants to invade the blue. I'm not very sure, but uh, you can never really fight a Tamus just like that lah. Unless you have some sick early game like you know Selina or Bill. And even so, ah, uh, it's still very hard to kill a Tamus early game. So from this Tamus, he knows that he he got a four zero in the early game, right? He just you know take gold crab, take everything, go go into damage build, and then. Outlane this Sylvana. So once he outlane this Sylvana, right? Wherever he rotates first, right? Sylvana will be always behind him. So his damage output on the opponent will always be the first, and they will you know win the game faster lah. And you know team fight is actually quite important in Mobile Legends, and it's actually quite easy for you to kill someone off. So for Tamus, you are level four when your opponent laner is just level three. I think, I think you basically dominate your 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 lane lah. Okay, so what he did in the mid game, right? Uh, I would like to explain is just that, uh, when the opponent is taking mid, taking board, or even taking top, right? He is always at, uh, the opponent side of the map. He is always there to you know, uh, taunting the opponents that eh, hey, it's okay, guys, come kill me, kill me. But at the same time, he knows that he he got a second spell who can which can run, or he can do a good judgment to kill someone off based of that. So, staying playing aggressive in the early game, ah, uh, you you can also sort of waste some ah uh, or most of their time, especially the ganker. So this is one of the good thing that Sana did pretty well, lah. Uh, ah, no bad, no bad, no bad. So, ah, uh, just now as you can see at the last part, right? 
uh, Kimi actually died uh, not knowing that how strong this Tamu is so next time when you all see uh, Tamu's which maybe have same farm as you or what right is he actually leading in the early game because of how strong uh, Tamu's is so after he killed the Kimi right the Lunox and someone just totis and have to rotate over and try to get a kill out of it but when they are doing so uh, actually the uh, Sana's team is already you know uh, farming his own raid uh, kill 2 at bottom so I mean that's the best the opponent can get out of it lah uh, trade uh, fight 2 gang 1 and you know trade 1 for 1 it's actually the best out of it but in a way don't pick uh, Sivana to lane against the Tamus or don't even try to uh, play aggressive on it lah because you expected to lose the lane okay so uh, let's move on for the Tamus one GG to Sana anyway Proud of my boy Yeah, proud boy Okay, then for this game right Let me mute him, okay, he noisy So he's playing Masha So when he's playing Masha right, I think I have shown before that uh, I think in the lane or row right uh, One of the recap is You can actually go and cut to their raid So what he actually did is He will, he also copy the same He copy what XCP do Wow, XCP so he didn't even try to uh, buy mass like last time. Last time you, you have to buy mass, right? Now you don't even have to buy. You just you either go for boots or you go for the uh nimble blade, nimble blade. So he managed to get a position out of it by juking the kufra and you know coming up to the raid. So I think he got the raid. Yeah, he got the raid. Yeah. So when he got the raid, right? He actually get a very big lead out of it. But you know, the opponent's hyper cannot get a raid, cannot do a poke harassment. But Hilda is actually very strong, but he didn't know how to play against the Masha, sadly. But in this case, right, it doesn't matter because he wins the resources by Sana. So what a Masha can do is actually, you know, what we've been talking about, split push, you know, uh, steal people's uh, resources. All these are uh, objective of a Masha. But at the same time, right, when you're playing the 1v1, you can actually try to fight the 1v1 and see, understanding whether if you can win the 1v1 luck. So for this case, right, uh, Hilda versus Masha, from what Sana told me, he, it is actually even eh, in terms of contesting the 1v1. But uh, Masha can do more in terms of stealing resource. Hilda can do more in terms of uh, doing the team fight. You know, running to the team fight and then just... Uh, uh, get a few assists off and stacks your charges up. So as you can see, why Masha is winning Hilda, right? Uh, actually, I think he told me Hilda 55%, Masha 45 In terms of the 1v1 scratching lah. Uh, but the thing is, he got red buff. Masha Sana got red buff out of it. So, I think he did pretty well for this part. And uh, that moment when I was watching his stream, uh, he played like 20, 20 games in a row of Masha. Because he really want to train one more hero up to his Tamu standard. And I believe it's near, it's getting near, it's getting near. So what he could have done is, you know, uh, join the team fight first. He can, after joining the team fight halfway, he can go back and press his out. Uh, but from here, he can't really press his out because he is not really out of the combat. And the open, his teammates is not, not ideal anyway. Because he is not playing like uh, ranked games with the Resurgence members. He's playing like solo queue, so he, he must make do with what he can. So at this moment, he know that team fight he can't win. He can't win, he have to do slow pick-offs and things like that in the early game lah, to see what he can do. So apart from slow pick-offs, like you know, uh, pick off one person here and there, then yeah, that's all he can do lah. Anyway, this is a surrender game, so uh, that's all I would want to say for Marshall part. And I think he did his part right, LI4. So, yep, definitely. Yeah, he did his part already. So, uh, that's what all Masha does. You take the thing about Masha, you scratch the people. Thing when he has, yeah, when he has one bar, he's a uh, actually very strong one v one duelist. Uh, his life still actually gives him the ability to one v one a lot of heroes and win the matchup. So when you're at one bar, you can try to fight people more, la. <clears throat> Especially you got red. Yeah. So try to get red and try to play the one v one. I think it's a good thing. Okay. So good job, Sana. Uh. So the uh, where is it? Uh? So the last one will be Cho. So he will be doing the Cho, right? So for Cho, 
it is very simple. First, you do setting. See whether you are preferred for the HP lowest or uh, nearest target. For me, when I'm playing the tank show, I always go for the nearest. But when I'm playing damage, sometimes I feel that uh, I go for the HP percent. But regardless, I usually use the hero lock. So it doesn't really matter much to me. But it matters a lot for Sana la, Because he don't use hero lock. Okay, so so from here, you can see that they are playing the 1-2-2. Two, two. What is that Mia there? Okay. So they are playing a 1-2-2. Two, two. Definitely, uh, Selena helped Mia do raid. That's why he, they are able to do fast. But not fast enough for even Sana to clear the wave first. So actually, uh, Sana is having the lead. When you're fighting a 1v2, right, and you can still clear all your creeps uh, until 6 minutes, uh, your tower still stands strong, right, you're actually winning your lane. So what the, the, the thing he can do is actually stop playing with uh, lousy opponents. Like this opponent, Selena could have just, instead of trying to arrow, put traps on him and try to scratch him so he can make him low, let him uh, kite him off to go home, this kind of thing. So, uh... I think I need to report Sana for playing with lousy opponents. So yeah. So for what uh he could have done is uh the best at this moment because Cho at level one, level two, level three can't really do much. You can only clear with and especially you're fighting against a Selena. And this Selena is not even putting traps la so we can't you know, we can't say much. So this game again he's playing against not a very strong team or strong lineup. But uh, he's just maximizing what he can do at the early game. So right, you think about it, as a fighter, if you have to play lousy offlaner or like a uh, weak offlane, right, you can't even go and scout the bush, you can't even, you know, go and win the lane or roam first due to this situation. So this is one of the reasons why that uh, now Cho is not as popular as last time. But it is still popular because it's a Cho, right? It's Iori, right? So... So he's still doing his part, especially when uh, Selena just roamed down and he managed to really get a kill off me. Eh? So I think what he did is okay, but uh, he could have do more uh, bush camping instead of roaming around and do be like an uh, additional observer ward since you know that your, your tank is not, is not uh, around the map. Maybe he's like, you know, reading his... Uh, the streaming chat, I'm not very sure. So, as you can see, when he has flicker, right, when you are level 4, you can actually, you know, uh, flicker kick onto the opponent carry. But from here, he actually make two misplay. Uh. Not really a misplay, a uh, play that he can actually do better. Okay? So, we shall take a look back at uh, uh, 48, okay? Uh, 48, right? When the arrow come, uh, as a cho, right, I always tend to block the arrow. Instead, right, the sister even got a road. Never mind. When he wants to use his kick, he should have wait for the link to come out and kick the link. Because, uh, Cho kick or link, ah, uh, definitely can kick. Correct or not, LY4? Yeah, definitely can. De definitely can kick. So, what he can actually do better there is to, one, uh, block the arrow from Selena, two, wait until the link drop down and straight away kick him. Mm. And someone he's using nearest. And definitely, right there, I'm pretty sure the link will die. Some more, he still got two of his member, so that is not the best play he could ever make. But you know, he did something else. Uh, but Cicilon died, and he never even killed this Selena of it. So again, what he did wrong, you see, he even shake his rainbow head. Uh, so what he actually did wrong, right, is he tried to outplay them. He tried to take the tower. Uh, luckily the tower really dropped and he actually got flicker, he can actually use his flicker. But I guess his hand is just slow enough lah, huh? Uh, so I'll, I'll, you know, show him this stick next time. Bro. Like, yeah, you know? So, if uh, he flicker that, he definitely would have survived. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely survive. And he can just flicker to the left or to the right. Then, in the way, he won't get arrow. Even the Krufa will have the, uh, enhanced AA, right? It won't deal the damage that the Cho will have died lah. Because it's just a mini uh. So he actually made a mistake there, right there. So until now, he still got uh, his flicker and you know, he used it at a very bad timing which is here. Uh, as a Cho, uh, uh, how you can actually get a Q out of someone at the early game, uh, is actually you use your 2Q first. 
And when you're using the 2Q right, you also press your AA So you deal some damage as well Then you slide to get the enhanced basic attack again You AA him with the enhanced basic attack again You slam AA again Then you ulti Then you still most likely got one more slide Then you AA again Chances are uh, 95% of the mage and marksman die Unless your own self uh, make your own mistake lah but what he did right there right is actually wrong why wrong uh because firstly he's not in the bush to execute the the game plan like hey, where is it ah uh? oh it was here so so at this moment right, i show you ah uh, so he actually selena saw him he saw him he never even a he wasted two of his q he only uh deal the slight damage so that that that, that hp you can see ah uh, is actually why he didn't use the Q for damage, he used for movement. You can do that to kick, but you have to make sure at least one of your member is around to dish out at least 20 to 30% of the damage. Then uh, it is okay to do this combo. But otherwise, in the early game, never do this combo alone. Unless, you know, you can kick to tower, or you, you are just good, la, or maybe the opponent is like 80 60% HP and you calculated. So right there, you know, he didn't really conquer much and he just want to use his flicker. So yeah, so as we can see, his early game didn't play well and yeah, that is what uh, not a good early game would end up well. You have a step of 1-1-2, one, one, uh, you will have like, you know, two of your turrets down where they only got one turret down. Of course, of course, he actually did pretty well. Like, he can blame his teammates or whatsoever, but he could actually uh, play better in his way, in his side first, before, you know, he can actually uh, blame his teammate. So, I don't want to play anymore, nothing already, the arrow didn't hit, ah. Don't go and watch his stream and see, ah. Never hit, never hit, never hit, okay? So, any questions for all the top and bottom lane? Uh, the reason why yeah. I put top and bottom lane, right, is because Cho... Uh, Sana only plays top, but either way, it's the same top and bottom lane. Mm. Uh, it's just fighter, fight fighter, or fighter, fight two. Same. So, okay. Anyway. Okay, so yeah. I answer some questions first. Uh. Sure. So, someone asked about Lunox off lane ping. Um, I feel like Lunox is actually a very viable off lane ping. I feel now the off lane, uh, there's a lot of heroes that can be played. It's about picking the hero that fits best in a specific situation so if you can figure that out then you will be able to pick a lot of heroes in different situations um then someone asked um what about Masha versus tamus 1v1 i think Masha should be able to win tamus 1v1 what do you think kcb Masha uh needs the raid to win tam not really win lah go break even with tamus mm, like, i think it's quite even matchup yeah, yeah but no matter what i think tamus is Still the strongest, strongest, strongest already. Level mm. one, level two, but maybe level four almost Masha can win. Yeah, Ben. If let's say you're having a losing matchup, right? Use your talents or use your emblems to have advantage of it. So like, I I feel that as a Masha, if I'm playing Masha and I want to fight against a Tamus, right? I will want to take execute to fight. Why? Because I know that chances are I will use my last bar of HP to try and scratch him down. And from there, I will try to use my execute. And I think there is a very high chance it's a 50-50 if I use execute. And if let's say, you know, uh, Tamos is full health, I'm full health, then uh, you all have to try it out. Lah. So yeah. knowing the matchup already afterwards, then you all feel that uh, using the spells like execute to win you your lane or, you know, take try to steal their rate. Like, as a Masha, still their raid, then maybe you can win the Tamus already. Because you'll be like level 2, or 2 and a half to 3, then Tamus is like level 2. So, you know, all the difference. Mm. So, then someone asked, uh, how to execute a good rotation in early game? Honestly, nowadays, uh, whenever, after you clear the creep wave, right, try to either go for their buff, uh, tell your team to go for their buff, ask your team to go for their buff. If not, go to the mid lane and pressure mid lane. Gain control of the river first. Then um, try to do something at me. Eh. Try to help your trio more. So that's the good, that's a good rotation. Eh. And then uh, someone asked also, what is clear way faster to rotate faster? So before, as an off laner, eh, before you rotate, right, you will actually want to clear your creep wave. So how it works is, whoever clears the creep waves faster gets to leave the lane faster. Eh. If not, let's say 
your opponent clear the wave first, then he rotate to mid. Then you haven't cleared the wave. Then if you are forced to rotate to mid, right, you will lose your whole crit wave. So that's why whoever can clear the crit wave faster uh, will get an advantage. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so leave the que- the other questions to the admins. Maybe later on, the lucky players will answer more, okay? So we'll move on to the next row. I think this row will be uh, LS4 rows already. So later on, when LS4 is playing the video, right, <laughs> he, he will try to explain how good he is, th- things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to talk negative about his play, okay? So you'll have a fair trade, guys. So later on, when, when it's tank, then he will do the same to me. So for this uh, early game, right, what he will be talking about is Ling, Len, Ling, Ling, Haya, and Lance. So mm. for Ling, uh, in the early game, is actually the weakest among the three, right? Or even Haya should be the weakest. These two are not as strong as Lance slot. So, yeah. so they have b- uh, different objective of or different you know puffing or different way of farming in the early game compared to Lance slot. How Lance slot farm is really to kill people to farm, because uh Ling and Haya can actually farm a lot faster efficient than uh, Lancelot and in terms of skills wise I think all three uh, requires a lot of practice like I mentioned when I was uh, doing workshop with uh, Jason uh, Assassin actually requires a lot a lot of practice to be good at it and LA4 is now working out on it so he's actually the Singapore higher number one or two so now drop to three I think now three <laughs> you see so it's very competitive Assassin's and it is very hard for you to really, you know, be consistent there. But you have to just keep playing, uh, the mechanics part. But what what Li may can even teach you is the farming path and why he feels that uh taking some fights and you know don't take fights is good lah. So, yep. So we'll move on to your first video. Okay. okay. Let's go. So let me mute first. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this game I'm actually playing Ling. Uh, actually, usually, right, I don't start buff. But because this game, I have a Selina. So when you are having a Selina on your team, right, you will want to start the buff first. Because Selina, the level 1 on the lane, right, is actually very weak. So if you bring the Selina to 3v3 your mid lane, uh, chances is you're going to lose the mid lane. But Selina clear buff very fast. So it's always advisable to bring your Selina and start buff first. Then, um, after I take the buff, uh, always take the healing creep and then now I'm going to go to, uh, for the red buff why I go for the red buff is because um, nowadays if you fight battle teams uh, they actually will go for your red buff after the healing creep so it's a very fair trade uh, where they take your red buff and you take their red buff then if they never take your red buff then you will have a 3 buff start so this is what I usually do when I'm playing almost any hyper carry uh. I will start their red buff so then uh, the enemy try to defend the buff. Um, I'm decided not to fight because as a link, level 3 is very hard to fight. So I was hoping they don't fight because I want to get my level 4 first then fight. But since they are fighting, I'm just hopping around to see whether I can get any kills off. Because you see, uh, link level 3, right? All you can do is you just jump down and cast your second spell once. That's all. Um, so that's what I did. Lah. Because I see the Lunox very low. Eh? That's where I decided to enter. So I went for the kill. Uh, and then since the Xbox is out of position as well, I continue to chase him. Then, um, apparently my team somehow managed to fend off their Kufra, which makes the Kufra very out of position now. And then, yeah, just continue killing. <laughs> so after all the kills, um, it, it's a very good team fight. Lah, that I, I don't understand why the enemy come and fight us also, because there's no objective. So what the enemy should have done is they should have come to take my raid, trade the raid. I don't know why they come for the blue. Um, so yeah, that's a very good start for me. La. Getting two kills uh, uh, early as a linger uh, is really a very good start. Mm. So then now it's a very standard. Since they never take my uh, red buff, I'm just going to do my own raid. Then I'll have a three buff start. So this is, a, this is really a very, very good start. Then after you clear all the buffs, clear your jungle, you will... This this is like the mid game Sherry. mid game Mid game, you will want to actually focus on a tower. Try to get either the tower or a turtle. So, um, because Link is very reliant on blue, so here I want to get my blue buff first before doing anything. So let's see. Okay, do blue buff. I, if I'm not wrong, I should be going for the turtle or a tower lah, because that's what I usually do. 
Okay, now because they trying to fight, I'm just like seeing if there's any fights. Actually, there's nothing. Actually, this play quite bad. I shouldn't have come back mirroring. The better play was for me to go top or bottom, pressure the side lane, then get the side lane tower. Here, I shouldn't have come back mirroring. It's quite bad. So don't follow this play. Don't follow this play. Now go crab. Mm. If I'm not wrong, I will start a total here. Yeah. So by starting the total, because I'm I'm quite ahead of link, I'm two zero. So I'm very confident. Even if they fight, uh, I can do I can do better uh. I can do a lot. That's why I started the total. But let's say if it's a zero zero game, you might want to see where the enemy is first before starting a total. And you must consider whether your team can win the team fight. So don't anyhow start the total unless you are quite ahead. We can really nothing much. Um, just team fighting. Uh, trying to go for low target. As an assassin, you want to... As a link, uh, I always like to go for those low HP targets first. Because it's easier to kill them. Uh. Then, um, just clearing the rest now. Oh, I know this part I died. Oh. <laughs> 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 Can't do anything here. Okay. I think the better play was I should have saved my ulti. I shouldn't have used my ulti for the like, Xbox. Then, at least at this Roger, uh, I can use my ulti for him. Then I'll be able to kill him. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so also. I think apart from your display, I think the, your, the one that you you chase down the Kufra also quite... Uh, you could have just used your second spell, no? Hmm. Uh -huh. Then that would be your yeah. kill and you'll be a three zero zero. You'll get more more kills in the early game for the assassin. It's actually <laughs> better, la, definitely. you got more goals, right? So, Wanted to act cool, eh? So that was, a, um, <laughs> that was a that was a echo mistake, guys. Echo mistake. So don't ever echo, guys. Don't follow. Go ahead and just win the game by your you know just just win it safely. Yeah, you know? I don't know whether this game you got win or not, but uh the early game for this game was mm. quite uh decent in terms of decisions and I actually spot like there's two mistakes only lah. So it's a good good early early game start lah for ly actually. And as a link, yeah. if let's say you're in the late, late in the early late game or in the early game, right? Let's say you only got blue, or your team is not really doing well, right? Try to go to the sides. Uh, by going to the sides, you you know sp uh try to punish the opponent's fighters. Then from there, you take their jungle. This kind of thing. That's what um, that's what the Philippines and Indonesians always do. And uh, as a link, always prioritize your blue. So even before your blue come out, ah. Uh, like maybe 30 seconds where the blue, you know, at uh, 3 quarter way mark, right? Towards the end, right? I think it's better if you inform your support or your tank. So, he can stand there and get the position first. Holding the position there is so important. Uh, that if, if let's say you don't go and hold, and you wait until the the grey colour uh, icon pops up, right? Chances are the opponent is already at there, and he will, they will be playing dancing with your... When they playing dancing, meaning to say that, uh, you can't really walk into the bush because you know inside got people, and if they walk into the bush, you you will most likely die, for nothing or even just for the blue, and the blue is uncertain, so things like that you all have to take note in terms of like, uh, communicating with the carry or the carry can you know, lead your like, hey I know blue I my blue in twenty seconds go and help me see if, uh get the position there first, yeah things like that is very important. So for his this link game, uh, pretty much is okay. He, he got a very good early start, also due to Selena. If you need, if you're playing this kind of hero like Link, uh, really recommend a Selena because of how weak uh Link is at level one, and you need Selena damage in the early game to sort of like take your jungles faster for you, so you can do things faster. Okay. So anyway, I uh, give me, uh. Let me see if there is any more mistake. Yeah, I don't think there is. So two mistakes. That's okay. Very good. Yeah, and of course to everyone, right? Uh, mistake is very. How to say? Everyone should make mistakes. No matter who you think it is, ah, uh, out there you name one player you idolize the most, right? I tell you, that player also always make mistakes, son. Yeah, there is two players that don't make mistakes, and from there they learn. So for the next one, uh, LYF4 will be talking about is the higher game. 
So for this other game, it's okay, quite balanced. Hey, this time round, I never pick, uh, take out the Selena one because uh, uh, Selena is a bit unfair, la, I, I feel. For the hyper to, you know, farm faster, this kind of thing. So this is the game without uh, Selena. So let's see how he plays. Cool. So uh, without the Selena, right? Like just now, you see I start buff, right? But because now there's no Selena, so there's no point starting buff anymore. That's why I started the mid lane. Okay, so let's just watch first. After the mid lane, because the enemy is showing weakness, like they are not clearing the wave equally with us. So it's very easy for us to just clear the lane. Then uh, like just now I explained, right? After taking the healing crap, uh, nowadays I like to go for the red buff. But because this game, their red buff is already gone. The enemy started the red buff. So, uh, yeah, it's quite common sense to just do your own buff here. Yeah. Because there's no point going for the red anymore. So, I'm going to do the blue here. Then I think I'll run back mid. Um, I always try to get the mid wave. That's something I like to do. Because every crit matters. But it depends on your heroes also. Like, let's say if you got... If your mid trio, there's some heroes that needs to be level 4 fast, right? Mm, you might want to abandon the mid wave. Uh, give the EXP to your tank on support. So because this game I'm fighting against the YSS, uh, he's very fast. Uh, there's no way for me to reach level 4 before him. When he level 4, I don't understand why he's in ulti. If you are playing YSS and you get your ulti, try to spam your ulti as much as possible. It gives a lot of um, pressure to the enemies. So this is, what, this is the play I'm talking about. Uh, like just now, the, my link went back to mid lane, right? Where I said I should have actually went to the side lane. Uh, so this game, I'm actually trying to pressure the side lane more. Um, by going for the side lane, right, if you manage to get a kill off the side lane, you can actually get a tower very easily. That's why it's so efficient to go to the side lane. And at the side lane, there's also a go crab to take. So always make sure you take the go crab as well. Uh, try to communicate with your side laners whether their go crab is available. Like there's the top lane and bottom lane. Usually, if you are fighting better players, right, one of the side lanes go crap will be taken by their trio or by the hyper carry so what you want to do is you want to take the other side's go crap unless you're very confident to win the 3v3 or the 4v4 then you fight the go crap together so here my popo got caught out uh i can't really do much because now they are having more players at the mid lane more heroes at the mid lane so i'm just trying to poke the yss poke the valium um really nothing much i can do here okay now my popo is back but my Balmon is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think the next objective I'm trying to get is the Turtle or a Silent Tower. As usual, as usual, whenever you reach mid game as a hyper carry, as a trio, mid trio, uh, you will always want to go for either Turtle or the Silent Towers. And then as a hyper carry, whenever your buff is up, just go for a buff. Uh. And, but you must inform your team also. La. Try to tell your team that you are doing the buff. Because sometimes your team don't know you are doing the buff. Then they anyhow go and fight. So try to let your team know that you are doing the buff. Because hyper carry is so important in every team fight. You are doing the most damage. Especially you got double buff. So if you can liars with your team to not fight until you get a buff. Uh, you will be very beneficial for all the team fights and for your team as well. <coughs> so this part I actually see the export low. Uh, that's why I went for the export. Then I'm going to go back to Turtle. This part, since the Xbox there, uh, actually the Cho should have stayed bottom. Eh. The Cho, it, now you see the Cho is hiding in the bush. He could have poked the tower a few times. La. <clears throat> so always try to pressure the towers. La. All the towers are very important. Every tower gives a lot of um, go and opens up the map. This is why uh, in mid-game, you always try to get the, the tier 1 towers. Especially the mid-tower. Mid-tier 1 tower is the most important tower. Because once the mid-tier 1 tower is down, it opens up the mid-lane and it makes you easier to enter the jungle. So if the mid-tower is down, you can very easily just go for their red and blue buff. So we are actually trying to skirmish and get off kills here. Because um, if we can get a kill off, then uh, we can get more objectives. So we are just trying to skirmish, skirmish and poke them. So this Jawhead is actually very out of position. So I managed to kill him. He actually rushed in alone without any backup, which is a very bad player. So by killing him, we managed to get a mid tower as well. Um, I think this game should be a win for us. Uh. So early down mid tower. 
if you fight professional teams, ah, uh, wow, I tell you, they defend the mid tower with the life one. It's very hard to get the mid tower. That's how important the mid tier one tower is. So here is pretty much one side area. I actually managed to get a lot of kills in this game, which makes me very fat. Then mid tower is also down. You see, mid tower down already. We very easy to go their buff. Now we are trying to get their red buff. Mm. And especially when you are ahead, uh, try to get more fights. If you are ahead, right, you you will what you want to do is you want to try and snowball your goal lead. And because you are ahead, you are having more items, so you will want to fight more, snowball more. So yeah. So this is the end of Singapore Haya Supreme Three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> what he did is just basically trying to maximize his farm and also at the same time participate in all the team fights very near him. So as you can see right throughout the videos right, this is when he's farming uh, he's actually trying to stay as near to the opponent side. Uh, uh trying to stay as near to the river as possible. So he can actually try to use his ulti for the fight because even though he's, he's a higher right which do better in the late game but in early game he also do quite a lot <coughs> so in terms of his what he can do is when they're trying to do a pick off right the ultimate and the shuriken can do a decent amount of damage so that's what uh, L.Y. is trying to do and as for this engage uh, he knows that it, it, when the opponent clunks together and they're all like you know Sticking right, uh, Haya can't do much. So Haya needs uh maybe Fasa or even Cho or Belmont to you know kite them so that they will split up or things like that, and then Haya can do more things. So you also have to depend on your hero that you're using. So he actually did his part already in terms of farming and at least throwing his ulti during the team fight, and even knowing that maybe the team fight is not good, he just throw his ulti and then you know go and farm. That's the least he can do, and he knows that when he do that, he won't die. So actually, right, in my opinion, uh, it's not, it's not, it's the best, the be better higher that I've seen, lah. Yeah. So this is one of his uh better max be uh better assassins, really, really. So okay, so I think for your higher right, no issue, no, no, don't really have mistakes, or I can't really just see anything from my side, lah. So early game, you're just dominating, so okay. So you shall go for your long slot game. Wow, you changed clothes, eh? So notice. <laughs> uh, show you, show you. <laughs> eh. This one feeling cold. Wear okay, jacket. You see? Oh. Oh wow. No. Okay. Very good. So for lens slot, right? Again, I never picked his Selena game. Ah, uh, Selena. So, you all can go and watch. Okay. So, uh, I think this start will be a very similar start with my Hayabusa lah, because, uh, like I mentioned before, if you are not having a Selena, just start the mid lane lah. It's very easy to clear the mid lane first. Then, as usual, after the mid lane, take the healing crap. So this trial I'm fighting is actually Pasa, Atlas, and Lumot. Uh, They are qu actually quite weak at level 1. That's why we are pressuring them so much. Then Gato decided to on the Atlas, that's why I poke him. Oh, okay. Now, why I didn't go for the raid here is because they are all solo. So, I wanted to contest their healing creep. Uh, healing creep. Bubble saw. Whatever you call it. Uh, wow, but that was quite unlucky. We actually didn't manage to get it. Actually, if just now we got the bubble saw, uh, I would have bring my team to invade their blue so that's what you can do if you are winning at the level 1 3v3. If you are winning at level 1 3v3, uh, you can fight that healing creep. And if you get it, you can actually go for the blue. So this this game, they actually very aggro. They try to keep fighting us. Then we also keep fighting them. Then since now, okay, now I go for the raid because I know that they are doing blue. They are definitely doing blue. Like just now, they already showed intentions that they wanted to start blue. That's why I'm so confident of taking this raid and I actually went for this raid. Oh my god, did we get it? Oh, okay, the Kagura got it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is actually quite a bad game. Like, just now, I miss healing creep. Now I miss the raid. So, the better game would have been just now, uh, I managed to secure the bottom bubble saw, uh, slash healing creep. Then I will manage to secure the raid. So, this game actually is not that of a good start for me. But it's still good for my team. Because, at the end of the day, we still managed to deny their raid. 
So it isn't that bad after all. It isn't that bad after all. So my team actually volunteered to do the blue for me. So I just went there to take. Then after doing the blue, because the mid wave haven't reached each other yet, so I've decided to do the red buff. I think after here I will be going back mid. Yeah. Golem, go back mid. Always try to make sure you clear every jungle creep. Right? Every jungle creep. Even though they nerf the goal of the jungle creep, but it's still it's still something to take. Right? So now I'm trying to see whether I can get any kills. Because I'm a land slot. Land slot once you reach level 4, uh, like now, uh, you will want to try and kill people. Try to get kills. Because level 4 land slot, you can actually deal a lot, a lot of damage. Um, it's actually one of the hyper carry that can deal the most damage at level 4. So you will want to keep looking for fights and kills. So... Quite unfortunate. I actually want to go for the export, but he flicker. So I just decided to ulti backwards and just dish some damage to their front lines. I think from this moment almost he's a very close gamer. Right? Because from here, I think our network is quite even. Even though we deny the rebuff, but they actually managed to get some kills off us. So you see, I, I this game, I didn't want to go to the side lane and I kept wanting to find their mid lane because I'm a land slot. Then I just felt like Lancelot, level 4, you can do a lot. Uh, one of the highest bursting assassins in the early mid game. So my mindset now is I want to keep fighting and keep finding kills. So even that their raid is spawned, I also went for their raid because uh, I was quite confident in fighting. But okay, the Gato missed ulti. If the Gato landed the ulti there, I would have fight. Definitely that fight we could have won. Oh, we are fighting now, but the Gato no ulti eh? Yeah, the Lumo quite bad. He actually took a lot of HP before using his ulti or something like that. So after that fight, uh, I see my blue buff is up. As usual, uh, when the buff is up, just rebuff. Then here onwards, we should be going for Turtle? Actually, this part, I should have taken the mid tower. This part, the mid tower is free. Uh. I should have taken the mid tower. But I prioritize the tower over the tower. This is a very bad move. I should have went to hit the tower a few hits first. So whenever you can hit the mid tower, try to hit a few hits. Uh. The, like I said, the mid tower is actually uh, the most important tower of the game. With your life. Yeah, must hit with your life. So because my raid uh, respawned, now I'm going to take my raid buff. Then since bottom is fighting, um, it's very logical to just go bottom. Uh. Managed to get a kill off. This bottom tower should be able to take also. The reason why I just left like this because I was quite confident that the bomber could take it without me. Like. Then the bomber actually got a tower. So uh, I didn't want to like raise waste resources by committing so many heroes at the bottom tower. So yeah, that's all. Hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, but I spot a few things, lah. <coughs> mm. So basically, uh, actually, from what I know, right, as a lens. Try to prioritize uh, level 2, then can invade. So for this uh, level 1 part, uh, the Fasa actually saved their, their team uh, in the early game. His that skill that <coughs> got turned him, the bubble saw actually do, you know, stop uh, LY's team from making yeah. any more decisions to do. So yeah, let me add on. So I think a lot of y'all will ask why I didn't use the retribution there. Because my mindset was I wanted to save my retribution for the blue buff. So if we could have gotten that healing creep right, I would have invade them with the retribution. That's why I didn't retribute them. <coughs> mm. Yep. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he still retrieved for the other side of Bubble Saw, <laughs> like. <laughs> I scared, right? Eh? After that, I scared, that's why. Yeah, anyway, uh, the league game afterwards is just, you know, like, mechanics issue, miss the kill on the fast. <laughs> uh, then when he's walking back to his blue, right, uh, none of the teammate is helping him to do his blue, so he's sort of like requesting for gather. But in uh, if you are really playing early game and you really want to snowball your early game, you should, the tank should already be there, you waiting for you to come, or you all have to work together, and not you wait there and then, uh, you have to call for backup. Then it won't really boost the early game of the last slot lah. So these are things that uh, 
if you are playing with your friends, please highlight to your friends that actually, hey, uh, go to my red or go to my blue first, so I can, you know, uh, come and do show way. Instead of you waiting yeah. for the hyper to, you know, uh, walk here, walk there for three seconds, then what you can do left is, uh, take the mid wave flat. Which, uh, he could have gotten the mid wave after he gotten his blue. Same thing, but he wasted, like, you know, six seconds of his extra time on mm. the blue. So, in fact, uh, that part wasn't really an ideal start for Lancelot. Pro- probably, you're uh, not playing with good players, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So, at this moment, right, uh, when you're level 4, uh, this mid fight, actually, I feel you can do more, eh. Uh, you can actually dash, dash, dash in all the way. Or, you know. But I think mm. the ulti is very nice, ah. The ulti is very nice. Like, you manage to pierce two people. So, this part is okay. Where's the part that I see like wait wait ah? Wait wait. Uh I think it's this fight. This fight actually you can use your Q to stack your passive first. So for who those who don't know right, uh the Q of Lance Lord is actually gi- giving Lens extra ten percent yeah. of uh damage per Q. Q. So uh up to three Qs. So best uh way you can think of is to Q two times and you land your W. Oh, by the way, did you know that the ultimate of Lancelot is also, uh, to, can, you can also use it to increase Lancelot damage? Also, right, when you take the movement speed that boosting at the red side, uh, that thing is also something like that. That thing also can give you an uh, extra 10% damage as a Lancelot. Mm. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I think this is the part that you should have went in earlier. Uh, when you're at level 6, then you could have dash Lance. Uh, uh, dash Atlas, Dash Leo, go behind. They go for Barca, right? Yeah. Yeah. The play yeah. could have done. Yeah, but you like could have been done. indecisive at the moment. But by then, the <laughs> the Barca already throw for. I think I was quite afraid that Atlas ulti me also. Yeah. Like, then they were like focusing the Lumor, so uh, my mindset there was like, ah, uh, just burst a Lumor lah. <laughs> but yeah, that was the another possible play lah to go for the Barca. Yeah. So mm. this one. Wait, uh, let's see. So no, nothing much really. Bottom is the bottom fight was also okay. I don't think I see any bad things. You finally brace up your courage and went in. You get an LS kill out there, so it's pretty alright. Then the Gato actually help you get the Fasa kill. So I think your early game was good lah. Just could have yeah. been better if you gotten the bubble saw, you could have gotten their blue or even that red could have been yours. So and you know your blue you could have gotten the blue faster if Gato was there. Uh so these are the things that you all need to be careful of if you have the tank or you're the support helping the hyper or you are the hyper with your friends. Uh take charge and tell your friends, hey help me do red, help me do blue. Yeah. Before you even reach there, all the few seconds is actually, I think, the reason why the early game is different. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, no more assassin, friends. I think we'll be talking about Tang Tang. So, before that, let me go into uh, seeing any of your chats, yeah? So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, let's not go to the offlane things already ah uh, guys if you want questions yeah. ask uh ask about the carry stuff you know and by the way i'm not i'm not tired i'm just like you know trying to listen to what he's trying to say so anyway offlane is not clearing wave off do you clear it as a hyper uh? oh if your offlane is not clearing waves it's like doing engages then as a hyper you can just go ahead and steal his lanes lah but you must let him know lah, like you want to take his wave, so he got some other things to do. So yeah, I think no questions for now, so we shall move on. Move on, move on. Cool. So for this early game, uh, for tanks, I'll be talking about Kofra, Atlas and Lolita. Why Lolita? Because nowadays I think I like Lolita a lot lah. I play them quite <sighs> loving it. So each video has their own power spy, blah blah blah. Objective has to be done in the early game, pairing with the mage of Sunas. So for every tank right, the best way to like play the tank is also to know which mage you are playing with for this meta. So in the future, maybe the beta won't be you pairing with mage. You will probably play, uh, be alone scouting or you'll be like playing the one two two in the old meta, you know, remember? So yeah. 
Okay. So this one is playing Kufra. So I remember this wasn't really a good game to actually show, but I want to show because I also, you know, make mistake. So for me, right, I always tend to get the mask whenever I play with a, a mage that requires level four, such as Cyclops, Kagura, Fasa, uh, etc., etc. But if I'm playing with Selina, Velia, Loi, I usually don't buy mask. I tell them to buy, or we try to get something to satisfy both sides that. He level 2, then buy mask, then I level 4, then buy mask. So it's a win win scenario. La. So this game, we clear wave, we trade, go to their raid. So when we go to their raid, right, uh, we can actually do what uh, LY, LY did just now. So it's like, uh, oh, don't really have to scare that your raid is gone since you already gotten your raid. And it is very hard for them to invade your blue at this point of time. So it is a very win win situation. So as you can see, uh, the my team of laner is uh, very good at pressuring them. So we just come here and dance, dance lah. But I'm not two. Uh, Kufra without two is pretty bad. So, uh, the Paxia actually managed to stop the raid from getting. So I told them this game, uh, we let's go for the raid. So we take raid first, so that we can actually take three. We have a three buff start ahead lah. So instead of taking our blue, we take one more raid. But in a way, it's just for the EXP. So at the end of the day, I go there just to. I, I go there until like you know the buff is half HP so I just go off first and take my blue so and it's also a way of scouting this blue because I'm not sure whether they will come and steal my blue so I will have to go first and make them prepare if let's say worst case scenario they come and steal my blue or so so since this game right I'm not uh the one that requires level 4 I am just you know going to be a uh, observer what for the early game just need to scout from bush to bushes time to time and then at this point of time I think I got a short call uh, uh, the Cyclops to come to take mid wave but uh, I don't know what he's doing I, I remember I was scolding him la, so yeah so since he's the one then I have to clear first if not he will reach the tower no one gets the EXP that's quite bad right so anyway he got turned his level 4 and I'm 3 and a half so I don't know what he's doing for this at last but well we managed to catch him, catch him. And like you see, uh, this uh, white Ishushi is actually more than level 4 and he just started using his first ultimate. So as a Ishushi, what you need to do is actually to press your ulti all the time. So as a tank, you have to wait for your 4 and your only source of uh, EXP and go is actually your mask. So what you can do is actually just to stand from bushes to bushes, report to your team that uh, which uh, where are they going and what are the decisions made to be made like let's say they go top do you want to fight them okay we fight them we go top do you want to dodge them okay we go bottom or we go uh distract them so actually uh this is one of the mistakes that i made i should have ulti earlier if i have fast fingers but the link didn't but luckily the link is uh lousy enough for me to get even a return kill where where he trying to fly over and hit me but when he doing his animation, I was also doing my healing animation and my healing animation is definitely faster than his. So with the ball right, if a link is in Kufra's ball, you can't use your W for a source of additional damage. Because the W is do something like a basic attack, but you never, you got uh, knocked, knocked up by the Kufra ball, so therefore you don't have the uh, extra basic damage. La. <coughs> So for this game, I actually tried to go for mask first because nowadays I feel that as the main tank, I don't have uh I don't have really have enough resources to buy tank items. So for this game, really uh the early game I wasn't doing very well. So uh when they got caught, I didn't actually ulti straight away, you know, to throw them off. But I was thinking of maybe he could have stayed alive and we could have get a kill. So. Hilda actually got killed by uh, Inshushin's ultimate which is actually quite weird you don't see it very often every time so uh, what you can do as a tank also is to just always be in front of your marksman in front of your majors and just play as aggro as possible in a way that because right uh, you play aggro uh, even if you make a mistake the opponent will, make it, will aim you will kill you so unless like like your MM or assassins dive, dive, dive with you and then you know kill with you then I don't think it's a good idea because by diving you're risking your marksman or assassins so uh, for this play I was still making some misplay but actually it's alright 
So I actually saw the Hilda went in back to the booth. So I was waiting for my queue to reset, so I can get a queue off him. So one of the mistake for this game is actually I have slow hands for the ultimate. I could have you know, land my ultimate faster for I think two engage just now. So since now I I'm I know that my team is getting a snowball off bottom and top tower, and we are taking the mid mid tier one right. So. Uh, just you know, try to waste the opponent's uh, spells, try to dodge the skill shot if they were any such as Selena arrow. Yeah, but sometimes I always tend to dodge. But when I dodge, uh, when I turn behind, um, sink a night arrow. Then I, ah yeah, wow, my fault again. It's not my fault because I dodge the arrow, sink got, gotten the arrow. Then we lost. <sighs> okay, don't talk about that thing, eh? That was season three, so. Whatever. So now we are just trying to get a as a advantage game, right? <laughs> what we are doing is to actually just scout the map. So now is the main game already. So more or less, uh, we are like just controlling the rotations of the opponent, lah. And actually, Kufra is supposed to be in the bush, uh, all the way. But the opponent are just always on the vision. So. So yeah. So anyway, uh, this engage I wasn't doing anything. Uh, I missed my ultimate, my jump also missed. So this ultimate, this engage we sort of lost lah in a way. So, uh, either way, why we win the engage is also because of the early game snowball that we did lah. So this game pretty much over. So, what I made, uh, for for here right is actually uh, wait ah. Uh, it's actually where is it? Where's the mistake? Where's the mistake? Uh, mechanic mistake is actually here. So actually, I know I was like, I think I was uh talking on stream. So at the same time, I saw that you know the Hilda is running away, but I miscalculate Hilda's movement speed with my uh jumping speed. So this is that. So I have to use one more jump, waste my time to kill him lah. <coughs> so the other mistake that I made is actually here. I shouldn't recall, I should have like, you know, stand stand there and you know, attract their attention so that they can actually uh, get the tower more safely. But either way, they got their tower quite safe lah. I also don't know why. But either way, Ellers and Sanya don't really have good clear wave mechanics. So it's quite easy to get their towers. So for Kufra in the early game, right, if let's say you are coming back from base, you can actually use your ball to, as movement speed, use your Q also as movement speed. So you are always to be in bushes time to time, walk from bushes to bushes, scout the map, giving your team the vocal they needed lah. So at this point, uh, I think the mistake was not here, was here. So after getting the LS off, like, I think... I think I blame the Cyclops lah. He got caught by the team and uh, I don't have a good position to out to ulti as well lah. That was like a first ulti. But the jump was actually uh, a mistake. So my ulti intention was actually to hit to that corner of the tip of the wall lah. But I didn't only hit it, hit the Esmer there, but I didn't manage to hit the link or whatsoever there. So yeah, so that's the end of uh Kufra. So let me drink one more water. Ah. Think uh someone asked if the tank has support buy mask, one of them get e exp isn't good. Uh, one of them buy mask carry because nowadays you will want one of either your tank or your support to be level two ASAP. So once they reach the uh, level two ASAP, then they can do a lot more. Uh, that's why. Mm. Mm. Okay, very good, very good. I think since the currently world record holders for a number of. It arrows eaten in a single game, yeah. That one is nearby. Okay, for this game, I'm playing uh, Atlas. I'm teaming up with uh, Lance and I think Valia. So for this one, I was playing with LI Force Lance and I was thinking whether I want to crop his Lance this game. But never mind lah. I think I, I use my Atlas game to crop better. So for this game right, uh, actually both sides early game wasn't that strong but ours was stronger due to the fact that we have Valia. Valia level 1 is very strong so 
with a Valia as Atlas, right, I'll just don't have don't buy mask. So let the Valia level one go and do the booking. But and but this is the mistake that he made lah. He could have like you know go to the uh bottom side of the bubble so and take uh harass the opponent so they can they won't take the healing uh as fast as us things like that. And we could be we we may even have the time to go back and take our raid. So at this point of time. I'm not buying mask due to the fact that I want to get my power spike which is my level 4 So I just buy a boost in case I die or something then I will keep uh, like 280 goals for the mask So this is just a safe play for myself lah So what I do is wherever where the uh, LIF is farming I'm also farming So we are just trying to get level 4 So this one I was thinking whether I should eat the 4 but at the end of the day I still go and eat lah <laughs> But anyway uh, we managed to get a small win here, like we tried to we wanted to kill the Alucard but uh LY managed to dive for the back line. And I managed to do a Q Q flicker for good old time sick uh. Then just nice my ulti is back. So I get a level four and then we just kill the Boxia out there. Uh. So it is a very 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 good start early game. So since I'm four I should buy the mask and since I buy the mask right uh, Channel Star will fight a lot of time, so I'm going to go for uh, the Speed Mask, which is the Courage Mask and Flitting Time for this game. And also, due to the fact that opponent do not have much purify, so it's very useful to have this kind of item. So again, what a tank needs, stay in one of the side lane, uh, mid lane bush, give vision, try to uh, drag around your map and see uh, how the game is supposed to be played, like what are their HP, if their HP low, maybe I can just uh, my communication with LI will be like, hey LI, top low, let's go. Then we will go together. Then, or uh, things, if they like, don't have, then we will try to, you know, uh, walk around and find some kills to find. Like. So for here, this troll is trying to outplay me, but who is he? Who am I? Correct or not? So, we managed to get him off, and then, you know, three of their members come here, and knowing they are already behind, uh, what the opponent can do is actually to go to the other side of the map and farm or get get kills off instead of trying to uh, react to what we are doing lah. So uh, since we are having a very good lead, I think that's it for the early game lah. But uh, let's just carry on and watch this exciting Atlas or something. Woo! So we are doing like the, the, but at the same time right one bad thing about Atlas is his ultimate is very the CD is very long so it's not very ideal to use Atlas when especially opponent will most likely take purify and they take purify uh, <coughs> that timing uh, opening window is very hard to find yeah so for this game we managed to actually like uh get uh, a lot of kills and we didn't even die but for this one if Esma do not have the verify i'm pretty sure Valor won't die i was trying to use to save him but uh i actually think about it just now i feel i felt that it's a mistake to use my uh ulti over there i can just use my slow to slowly cut uh, them off from Valor la. but at the end of the day we we luckily got got, got the kill from alucard <laughs> So yeah, we got the courage mask and now we are going to go for the uh, flitting time. And Cho managed to use his ulti on me which is a very good engage fight. <coughs> Cho without a uh, kick is not really a good Cho. It's not Bruce free anymore. So right here, I'm just here to use my ultimate and then trying to go back home. So for this, I think it's really a bad play lah. Like could I could just from there try to pull from the front. If can't, then forget it. We still can get towers. But instead, I lost a flicker, which a flicker uh, with Atlas uh, can actually have the opportunity to get like you know a uh, few kills <coughs> or a good team fight, which can lead to better snowballs. Uh. So from here, I think it's okay. I'm just resetting for my ultimate as Atlas. So actually Veil is a very good hero for me to kill. So I pretty like I like that they have a Veil. And we have a Veil, yeah? 
Wow, I almost like mistook which one is which one right? Okay, since my team wants to take the turtle right, so what I did is just to stand in the bush to give better vision. And since the turtle is down, my first priority will always be Veil. But I should have gotten the pool before Veil use his ultimate. Then that would be more value, more value than him using the ultimate there. And it could have killed my team lah. Right there, if you we were playing in a more closer game, this is not really a close game at all. But uh, I didn't play much Atlas uh, afterwards already, and I feel Atlas is a very strong hero now until Atlas is patched. So, you can abuse the Atlas pick and try to get more wins, try to get more uh, MMRs for now. Lah. And the uh, play the gameplay of this is actually quite simple, okay. Uh, uh, Kelvin, uh, when tank and support by mass. Oh, okay, so basically, in my opinion, uh, uh, they both buy, they will get EXP, but yes, correct. But the thing is, the patch already make it to a point that the EXP is not worth for two people to get. Instead, one person get is better. So, technically, you only need one person to get. And actually, uh, the support in the long run will have higher farm than the tank. No matter why, because the support will always stay around the mid when leash the EXP. So that is the reason why the tank always buy mass. But when does the tank buy mass? Yeah, but if you are with a Valier and the Valier level 1 is just strong enough, you can just buy mass, then give you the level 4. And you don't even have to buy mass if you really want. You can just take all the mid wave if you, if you really can, la, actually. So yeah. So let me move on to the next slide. Uh, so for the next one, I'll be talking about Lolita. Why Lolita? Why? Okay, because Lolita is about early game. You have good shield uh, where your shield can eat all marksman skills. <coughs> you have a uh, good passive in the early game, and the ultimate can play well with flicker. So let's move on, okay? Okay, so as level one, right? Uh, the reason why I walk here is also this is not the laning area. I just skip because uh not much time already. Uh, the thing is, uh, Lulita right don't really requires any farm. He just need level one. Uh, if he has a level two, then so be it. Level two is okay because the shoe can block all projectile range. So it's quite uh it's quite situational pick for Lulita. But if you are fighting against marksman. Or you're fighting against majors like uh, Cyclops. Uh, go ahead and pick a Lolita. But for this game, I just pick because I very long never play and I want to play lah. So for his ultimate, right, it's very good to use with Flicker. Uh, uh, ultimate into Flicker can actually stun the opponent and make sure that, you know, uh, your, your Hyper and uh, Support can do a decent amount of damage that they may even kill. So that's how good uh, Lolita stun is. And not just that. Lolita, the stun can, uh, the damage is also very high. And if you think about it, right, if you really are playing a Lolita, please be aggressive when you are level 1, level 2, level 3. Why? Because when you kill, uh, and you try to stun people, what you can do next is actually, you know, AA and then put up, put up your shield. So the opponent marksman have no choice, have to run. Have to, you know, uh, walk into a different position, which all this costs a lot of time. Uh, isn't as good. So these are the things that uh, you guys uh, need to keep uh, be an eye on uh, Lolita is not a passive tank so please don't use it as a tank to hide behind your hyper or always stand at bush but where else in the early game you really can stand in front and just stun and tank people like you see wow. Wow. what a good stun to cancel the throw out and what a good ultimate with good flicker so for here I'm just playing passive uh, aggressive but I don't know why the YSS ran away, but I mean, um, my Q traded for Kufra and Haya, I think it's pretty worth it lah. But if YSS don't run and continue the fight, we might be, maybe my life won't be uh, traded away, but doesn't matter because I'm just a tank. I'm just a tank, so I don't really care about my life. I always value my calls more than mine, so that's one thing about uh, playing a tank try not to have a KDA mindset and since now you can just keep dying lah 
So for here right, as a Lolita, I think my ultimate is very bad. And my shield wa was actually to block his shuriken. So I got outplayed for this engage. Totally outplayed. Uh, don't know what was I doing over there. Then we have to reset lah due to that. Yeah. And uh, But then again, I found a pick off right there. I found a Kufra and all of my team trusted and died with me. But all of the opponent come and want to want a Lolita's life. You see? My, I don't know, they hated me in the uh, past life or what. But uh, as a Lolita, if you can trade up 1 for 3, uh, 1 for 2, uh, I think it's very worth it. And But before you trade, right, make sure that you land your ultimate well. You use your first skill at least once. Because in an engage, you can actually use twice. And your shield to up once and be at least block some projectiles. Lah. So this is what uh, Lolita can do. And actually can be effective. So, uh, if y'all don't know, right, uh, actually, uh, this Lolita was, uh, uh, one of my favorite hero to use, one of my favorite tank to use, because of how mobile, uh, this tank is, and, yeah lah, and I can just protect my helper or be aggressive anytime I want. So, for what I do as a Lolita, right, is to, again, to, to always be in front of my teammate but before that right because of lolita passive i can actually uh give my team shields so sometimes i play defensive until i give my team shield first then i play uh, aggressive but when i see opportunity i don't even give them shield and i just went ahead la. sorry i just went ahead bruh to learn from ay yeah so so, so this is how I play my Lolita. I didn't think it's a good thing, but luckily the traits are always good. And for this engage, right, for this entire clip, uh, uh, I got outplayed at this area. Wait, is it? Yeah. <coughs> so, at this area, right, I was not supposed to even use my ultimate there. Then, at the same time, even if I want to use, I have to wait until... And knowing that he is holding bright, I shouldn't have used that already. So, uh, it also my ultimate is also reason why uh the YSS got dive. If my ultimate didn't use, they won't really go and dive my YSS already. So yeah, so this uh this is the big big mistake that I made. But I saw you know, get a get a trade off back lah in a way, thanks to my shoe as well. So, okay, no more for tank. Any questions for tank guys for the early game? Huh? Any questions? Let's see. Uh. What query do you want, Kelvin? Uh, he asked him on the mask. Uh, why you want steel jungle from your carry? No lah, usually uh, we are just trying to get a quick way faster. We just want to clear the jungle faster so that we can rotate faster, this kind of thing. But sometimes I just leave them there. La. But uh, it really depends on uh, whether you need a 4 or you buy a mask or something like that. So, uh, when do we upgrade? Uh, for mask, right, you can upgrade anytime you want. But uh, I recommend it to be, uh, when you upgrade, you better make sure you use it. So as long as you upgrade, it's okay. But for me, I prefer to upgrade uh, as early as possible for now because uh, the tanky items is actually not very tanky unless I can have a combine or combo of like, you know, opponent has a Bruno, opponent has something like very bursty like Fasa, right? Things like that, I will buy uh, the Twilight Armor. Then before Twilight Armor, I maybe will be buying Athena Shield. So it depends on the opponent. So if opponents is a mix of pure magic, physical, everything, anything you buy is useless, right? I really, really recommend you is to buy the mask straight away. Uh, but you also have to make sure you use it before the fight or before you die, lah. Then this meta for tank is really quite glass cannon, lah. It's really don't feel like a tank. And when the game goes south, ah, when the game like the the you lost, you win the early game, but you the mid game is even right. 
the opponent can just wipe you because you're just not you're just not tanky enough. So uh to Moonton please uh, buff your tank items, thank you. So I will go to the next slide which would be the mage slide, okay? So before the mage slide, uh, I will just answer one last question that will be from King Shelby. Example of good tank now. Uh. Uh, Alice, Kufra, Alice Kufra is the most stable tank bah, if you really want. If you want to have fun, you can go for Johnson. Johnson is a fun, fun tank. But don't expect to win because uh, it's not easy to control things like that. Okay, so let me go to the mage slide. So for me, I'll be talking about Valia Lois and Inna okay? So let's go. So for the first game, he is playing Valia, right? So as Valia, uh, uh, chances are you are just going to buy mask. But for this game, I don't know why Sing didn't buy mask. He could have buy mask so that uh, Kaleo could have just, you know, uh, Kaleo can leash the level 4 like just now. But uh, luckily for them, the opponent uh, give this value a uh, good value of it. But then again, you see, if you are not buying much, if you are not buying much in the beginning, uh, then don't buy all the way lah. Uh, because even if you buy now, you also won't trigger the mass point. So uh, uh, from this point of view, you can see that Singh actually didn't play for quite some time, and he's still at the old, uh, old meta kind of uh game style. So why they are winning and why they are killing is because uh. He landed all his uh, skill shots, which is a uh, very good yeah. thing, la. A very good thing. So if you are not, if you are buying mass and uh your tank is not buying right, then your tank can follow the marksman and then you can play the disturb. But since you are a valier and you like to disturb, you should have caught for the mass thing. Then now, end up both of you buy mass and uh this level four YSS is going to be very fat lah in a way but your tank and your support won't be as fat anymore lah. so so what he do is just to actually can bush and put pressure off the opponent jaw heads and mid lane so from here as you can see he's landing his spells again and again i don't know he, he's stepping or he's dragging his back lah. So at this point of time, uh, uh, as a failure, since your mana left like two shots, right? If you got the intentions to go back mid, uh, chances are you need to recall. If not, you can't really save your tower. So by then, by now he walks back to the mid wave, right? He already lost like uh one creep wave of management. So what I feel that what this game could have do is the tank to be the one to get the level four, since the Atlas level four is stronger. But uh, I think the tank just wants to protect the marksman more lah. But it's also <coughs> But in the long run if you're not getting anything out at the bottom right As a mage uh, As a tank you all play like that and the creep just eat into the mid wave Nobody takes the mid wave creep then You all will lose out in the mid, mid game already So from here, uh, a Valia level 4 and a Valia level 2 is pretty much the same. It's just more of like he got one per 5 in a way lah. Or enhance a uh, fireball. So uh, at first when he wants to buy the uh, growing one, I was like, uh, I was a big choke already. I also don't know why. <coughs> but when he changed back to the... Frozen Truncheon, which is a better pick lah. Winter Truncheon, sorry. The Winter Truncheon is a better uh, item for Valia, especially you are fighting against Kufra. You are fighting against... Who ah? Valia... Uh, no, no. You are fighting against the uh, Harif, Haya. The Haya, yeah. Yeah. And... A draw hit. See all the dive dive heroes one. Mm. Then... Very high chance you need the Lightning... Uh, Winter Truncheon. Then afterwards you will need the Durance lah. Because they have Harif, they have Tamus, uh, and two other life stealers and uh, draw hit with Shield. <coughs> Actually, this game, uh, any item is also okay. The ice cream was also okay because uh, they got a lot of uh, mobility walking heroes like draw Tamus, 
uh, Grab. But Haya and Hari don't really require, no, uh, not re- don't really have much effects on the ice cream lah. So, but either way, glowing should be the worst item to pick against them. So he actually did his part in the early game to put pressure. Uh, he can make make uh like Kufra go home, things like that, and even kill. That's how, that's how confidencing is with his video lah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you're watching out there, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. I, That's quite. Okay, at least he survived, lah. Uh, I just, I just praise him only, eh. Then he jumped in. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> See? Singaporean cannot praise one. Praise in stream also, also wrong, man. <clears throat> yeah, so, so he actually did okay for this. It's just more of the start, lah. Then if this part, if. Like what I said lah, tank don't buy, he buy, then your, whatever he's doing all the way is okay. But if he is buying, if he's not buying and tank is buying, then he should have followed the the team also already. But then again, uh, pre- pressuring, the mage pressuring the opponent is also good also. So, so I think with this lineup, it's better if Belial buys and Atlas don't buy ah. For this two, just for this two, yeah, it sounds better lah. Better than you buy, you you have to buy also, and then Atlas also buys, and y'all both don't get a value out of it. And for this, uh, Sing actually managed to get a whole bottom wave, so meaning to say the Cho will be lesser farmed by a lot. Oh, actually the the both side lanes may not even make the tank and support trigger the massa, so okay lah, whatever. Yeah, but in a even game where your silence don't die, it, you you really have to discuss with the tank or the support of whoever is buying the mask. If both of you bus, buy mass, and you're playing a good game, right? You will lose the game actually. Yeah. So next, next, next. Okay. Okay, Luo Yi. Okay, for Luo Yi, right? It's very simple. Uh, you just need to, you are very strong in against defend. You, you are very strong defending. Uh, all the invades. So wow, what is he doing? Ah, uh? <laughs> that flicker, quite redundant. Yeah, quite redundant. Okay, never mind. He training. He training. So what he is doing right is actually to walk around mid, trying to get his level two. And why is he not level two? Ah. Uh? Because he chased the passer, then he, he abandoned the wave. Oh, okay. So for Lo Yi, right, this of this gameplay, I feel is wrong lah. I feel no matter what, as a Lo Yi, you need your level 2. You need to at least get level 2 before you really roam around and buy a mask. But then, this game, um, he haven't got the mask, why ah? Uh? Eh? I a bit confused eh. Yeah, you buy it. Go and buy it. Haven't? He holding? He won't get level 2 then by then. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. No, but the thing is, I think op- the whole team is level 2 already, eh, except yeah, him. He got level 2 then by. Yeah, yeah, but I think this game, the whole team is already level 2. Bef- so, he could have just bought the mask and give the link entire XP and just let it take the uh, level 2. Ah. So, for, uh, that is a bit selfish play. So, kudos to Wasabi for not scolding Sing. Kudos, kudos. So, uh, as a level 2 low E, uh, what you need to do is not to actually really follow your hyper. Uh, it's actually to stand in front of your hyper and try to start a fight there. Or you can even go and defend the invades, defend the side lane split push. So, maybe this is not really a good game to show a good example. But, but then again, Showing bad example can make y'all think that uh, what he's doing, y'all try not to do so much. So for this, it's okay. He managed to get the kill bottom. And he landed all his combos quite well, the Yin Yang. But uh, felt that uh, he uh, didn't really use his flicker into use, usefulness. Lah, so... So from this game, he right? He's flicker, so weird one. Yeah. Oh, his flicker, I feel he didn't need a flicker one. 
Yeah, that's right. He don't even, actually even need the flicker one. So, but then he let his combos okay lah. So that's all I can say for his low E. So actually, yeah, uh, he luckily he get level four and he go he he add the ulti and walk into it because right low E is uh ultimate in the early game uh, It's actually very useless. It's useless to the point that you can't really use it. So why what do what do professional low E player use right is. He, they usually, uh, professional low player users used to just to when the cooldown, uh, can right, you just try treat it as the YSS lah. So what you do? Uh, CD finish, you just throw somewhere, uh, some bushes, or some walking path. You just throw there, throw here, throw there, just for the vision only. And then also you can sort of in a way waste the opponent's time. The opponent talk, whoa, 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 you coming, you coming. Then they came in the bush. Beside the bush that you put, then you can sort of outplay them a little bit lah. So it's pretty alright lah. So that is how professional low players use used to scout maps. Like like is is basically like YSS are uh, ultimate. So that's one one good thing to see lah. Huh? So we shall move on. Uh, let's see me. Uh, I think nothing much really. He see he didn't really use his ulti. He could have used to you know put pressure bottom or throw here, throw at a mini map. See where is it that can be thrown. But his combo deal very decently, land very decently. So that's one good thing. So as you can see, I think. Uh, Sing don't really know how to use his ultimate. It's actually just to scout map lah. So okay, so I think nothing much from here already. So again, let's see his level one. I don't know what he's doing. Eh. Hey yo, okay. What you can do is actually take the mid wagon and take the what's that called the bubble saw. Hey, he flicker. He flicker away from the crit wave. Then he yeah, chased yeah, yeah. Passer, so he level 2. No, he didn't take the Wigan EXP and the Barbasol EXP. That's why he's level 1. And since he's level 1, right? You see, even the Angela more fat than the Loi, uh, he could have just buy the mask, don't have to wait until the blue to get the mask. Uh. This is quite okay. This is quite wrong. Uh. Uh, who else buy the mask? Joe he bought the mask, okay. I think Sister also got some EXP la. Just now I think I saw. Yeah, Sister got some EXP also. So I think technically uh, uh never mind la. I think I, I can't really see Sister. Maybe his Sister is slow, that's why he didn't buy. Okay, let's go next. So for Selena right, best Alex best hero I tell you. I think he gonna uh he got into some coma or heart attack during season three, then he suddenly become good at Selena. Okay, so what he did is actually uh do blue first, then afterwards go and get get people with his arrow. So pretty pretty straightforward, but uh he is too aggressive here. But most likely he is testing and unlike unlucky yeah. Uh, to even dash back to the Diggy's bomb. The Diggy is 3000 IQ or what? Well, well played, well played. <coughs> so for this game, you guys can see right. Uh, they, are, they are playing with a uh, Hyper Fanny. Which is okay. Then... I think chances are they are going to only kill Diggy. Maybe Velia, Kaja, Tigreo arrow can't really be stopped. And uh oh, oh opponent is a uh, hyper one one. Okay, so opponent is very flexible for here. So for this game, I think he is pretty lucky to even gotten the blue buff as a uh, support Selena from the opponent side. It's a very very value trade. And he pretty much sort of dominating the early game with his uh, confidence skills. So see, he haven't even see whether he or not, he just walk in front. That's how confident he is. 
So wherever he walks in, he can actually walk out and then try to reset mm. and throw another tower, uh, another arrow. That is actually very good. Very good, very good, very good, Selina. Speechless. Yeah. So opponent wants photo, but you know, thing is just being uh sporty. So we'll give people photo and then take a kill out of there. So he managed to use the W well. If I were there, I would have died right there by Tyrius push and you know CC and one would have killed me. So right there is not, is quite a sick play. So I think Selena for his game is pretty hard to explain like uh. He's just is it is just someone's hero at some point, but this is how a uh, early game Selena can do, for support. And in order to do that, right, I think the most basic is to actually hit arrow ah, for Selena. If let's say you can't hit arrow, you must at least know how to land your ward spell. Because ward for side lanes to zone for side lanes is very, very good. See, so wow, this one Selena main. And his hands on the flicker was on point. So that's how. This is uh two months ago, Alex. Uh. Very strong, Alex. Is it? <laughs> yeah. This video two months ago. Yeah. The the okay. when he got his first pink hair or something. Uh. <coughs> so, good job, good job. Uh, I think nothing much to say already. Uh. He just dominated the game and ah, uh, we got not much time, so let's move on. Uh, okay, Sicilian, Sicilian, right? Actually, isn't a uh, ideal early game. I tell you, you actually lose every hero, every hero, every match hero. But, but uh, in the early game, if you can hit your objective, right? I can pretty sure that in the mid and late game, uh, nobody can kill you. Nobody can touch you because you're that strong. So basically, what is your objective as a season? Your season is to just get as much stack as possible. So how to get a stack? Your Q right can use two times, but you have to reset it after two times. If not, you will have mana issues. That's as simple as that. Then we are always staying around mid area. So how, how is your puffing right? You see the four uh, blue, red, blue, red, right? Uh, that is your that is your boundaries. That is the only place that you can walk around. <coughs> if you walk until to the side lanes, you must make sure you have a camellia. Then you will be effective and you will be strong. See, so that is how useless a uh, Sisyon can be. Like no matter how good a player mechanics is with Sisyon in early game, he is just useless. So he's just trying to get stack, 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 blah, 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 blah. Uh, when he got 4, right, try not to chase him because 4 is actually quite good for uh, Sicilian. So how, how how is he playing his 4 is actually, uh, the 4 actually gives, gives you a good movement speed. And he tried to predict, predict, predict lah. So he saw the Yuzhong. Since he saw the Yuzhong, right, he got a Q which grants a movement speed. Good lah. So that's what uh Sison do lah, but no do, you you don't really have good damage lah. Unless you really can land it to the pool of the first kill, the bats. Then you have more damage than the, the, if you never land it there. So yeah, so this is uh not really a meta lah, this is Sison. But uh that's how you play how that's how you try to be play as a Sison in early game lah. Okay? So uh let's move on lah. let's move on. Okay, let's go, LY4. Okay, so, so now it's the Kimi. Yeah, Maxman. Yeah, let's go. Kimi, Ishushin, and Roger, okay? Mm. Okay, so we'll talk about Kimi first. Let's go. <coughs> so on Kimi, usually, you don't usually run Retribution because as a Kimi, right, you actually need defensive spells. Um, Flimshot, wow, this Kimi should be very long, right? Nowadays, I don't run Flimshot on Kimi. Mm. But yeah, nowadays, Kimi usually will take Flicker or Purifier. And as a Kimi, you will start to clear the mid lane first, no matter what. Because it's actually very easy for Kimi to clear mid lane. And this game might have a Lunok support. So Lunok support is actually a very strong early game support. 
this is why we are fighting this. Wow, but they actually managed to get a healing crab. <coughs> so this game is actually quite bad. Uh, they managed to get a healing crab. Now they should be coming for my buff. Usually what, what you do when you win the healing crab and win the healing crab fight is you will want to take the enemy's buff. But because this game they are all so low, uh, I'm actually trying to get some kills off the team fight. Uh, yeah. Wow, quite unfortunate. Cannot get a single kill. Can I get one? Oh, I managed to kill one. So, this trade wasn't that bad. Uh, because I felt like if the enemy were better players, uh, uh, they can actually do more. Because they already got a healing crap and they managed to kill us. So, if they were more... If they know how to play better, I think they would have gotten my blue buff. Uh. But it was fortunate that they didn't come for my blue buff. Mm. So... At least we managed to fight and win a team fight. Uh. Okay, you know why I choose this clip or not? Why? Because this clip uh, was the time that you hit 2k, 2K viewers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, that's all. Uh. I, we, we, need, we are low on time, uh, so we try to move yeah, forward. Yeah, let's move on, let's move on. Uh. <coughs> what is this? Well, SS now is one of the fastest jungler as a hyper carry. This is why, if you guys watch my stream, I always say YSS is the best hyper carry. It just does things so fast because it can actually crit six times in a row. So you see, uh, this game, why I started blue because I have a Selena. Then, as usual, I'm trying to go for the red buff. Uh, then I realized the red buff isn't there anymore. Hey, eh, why? Why did no red buff? Oh, I think the Jawhead took their own red eh, while they took my red. That's actually a very smart play from the enemy. So because they take my raid, then my team decided to fight them, to fend off, to fend them off. Uh, I also joined the fight. So YSS, the early game damage uh, is actually quite high as well. Because, like I said, uh, you can actually crit 6 times in a row. It's just a very OP hero now. Uh. So don't be scared to fight. Uh. If you can fight, just fight only. Don't need scared one. And always max your first spell first. So if your first spell lower cooldown, uh, you go in, you slash six times, crit six times, you can actually get out already. You see, the cooldown is just so fast. And because we won that team fight there, so I made the call to invade their blue. You see? So, so this game, even though they take my red buffs, but at least uh, I managed to take their blue, so it was an even trade. Here. Um... Nothing much, uh, I'm quite low. I think what I wanted to do here was to get level 4 also. Because if I get level 4, uh, I can straight refine them. So I'm now trying my best to get level 4 actually. So my mindset my mindset now is to keep getting... Is to still try and get level 4. That's why I arrow the creep. Then now I level 4, I should use my ulti. So I actually... Make them quite pressured now. I forgot they are blue. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, I missed this game and I start on Malfoni. So this is actually a very bad start. Uh. I didn't I thought I managed to get two buffs, but actually I just got one buff only. So my farm now is still quite high uh, because I managed to get one kill and two assists. So it isn't that bad. And the thing about YSS is like I say again, uh it just does things so fast. That's why you can farm so fast also. You clear everything so fast, you can rotate faster, and since you rotate faster, you can get more things. You can get things faster. So this team fight, um, this team fight quite lucky, just has my ulti up. And if you are team fighting at uh, level 4, mid game, uh, like now mid game, after you level 4, uh, don't be afraid to just go in and fight uh, after your ulti. You really deal a lot of damage as well as us. So you yeah, this is pretty in, much... You go in here, then you ulti. <coughs> yeah, because just now my ulti is still on Kunama, that's why. So I just mm. go in first, oh. But yeah, just a broken hero, uh, what is this? Melee form, range form, melee form, range form. And if you guys don't know, uh, your second spell actually gives you two critical hits as well. So that's how you get six critical hits. Mm. Mm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I miss your retry? Well done, well done. <laughs> so you want to explain why you choose this video? Uh, don't have lah. Just oh. good, good, just some good place lah. 
Das ist auch für Sonne. Oh. <lacht> <lacht> okay, the next one is your Roger. Also, we're sending that one. Okay, let's go. If you got Selena, I will always start blue. La. Like I explained just now, Selena, if you bring him to the lane, he all he can do is he just trap the enemy and bite them, which isn't that optimal. La. So I would rather start buff with Selena. And all the good Selenas, they will ask you to start buff first. Because clearing the buff with Selena is just so fast. Then you see, few seconds done already. Five, six seconds done already. Six seconds to clear a buff with Selena. Then just very standard. La. You see, every game, every game my start is the same one. Buff, healing creep, raid buff. If Selena, if no Selena, then I will just do healing creep and go to raid. So nowadays people are smart. You see, like this game, they also do their buff, their raid buff. So I couldn't go to their raid buff. Then my Popo fighting bottom side, so I just decided to help him. Oh, why did they buff so fast? Yeah, it's a hurry fan grog. Oh. Yeah, I think because of the Grog help. Uh, they actually do the Dao buff very quickly. Eh, yeah. Which is quite surprising. The blue was 3 people do. Mm. Oh no, wait, the red also 3 people do, I think. He pro, eh? <laughs> so as much as I want to take my red buff now, uh, because the mid keeps skirmishing. So I'm trying to help them to skirmish first. There you see. And I also can't do the red myself. Because I am actually very low. So if, if I'm actually in Discord with my team, I will definitely ask them to come and me do rare. But because this one is with like random players, Hindu players, and yeah, I forget what I'm playing with. So because we are not Discording, but lucky the Popo know that I'm doing rare and he knows how to help me. So not that bad. So as a Roger, uh, you actually want to play very aggressive early game also because. Roger, you will always want to try and snowball the early mid game. Because when you reach the late game, your late game isn't better than most of other hyper carries. Your late game is actually not that good. So as a Roger, you will always want to snowball the early mid game. Try to find as much skirmishes as possible. Mm -hmm. mm. So every time there's a fight, just go and help long. Because you can do you can really do a lot of damage in early mid game uh, as a Roger. And I think it's a good thing in this kind of like rank games because in this kind of rank games there are just so much fights and it's so easy for like Roger to get kills. Yeah, you see, they keep fighting one. I don't know why the enemy also keep, keep fighting one. Like oh no man, I just keep fighting like bro that. So yeah, Roger is a good thing. Oh. oh if. In competitions, uh, actually, there isn't this much fights on uh. Then what I will do is I'll go for turtle and tower, cycling towers. But because in this kind of games, there are so much fights, so I actually like to keep joining the fight and get kills off the fights. Make myself more fat, then easier to do things also. So here, yeah, nothing much really. Uh. I've a very fat in 3-0. I think at this point of time, just go for tower so. Like whenever, when the mid game comes uh, as a hyper carrier, uh, like I mentioned a lot of times, either the turtle or the tower is objective. So since the tower is, uh, the turtle is down, try to go for tier 1 towers lah. Uh. Mm. Mid tower is the most important, so... Mm. Yeah, yeah, in this part, I get mid tower. We are always finding the mid tower openings. Yeah. Oh, oh, Enemy very fierce, I keep fighting on. This game quite lucky, yeah. Managed to get me the early. I think that's all, uh. that's all for this. Uh, that's all for this uh, video clips. Okay, anyway, guys, uh, I think uh, that's the end for today. Today, we'll only be talking about early game. We'll find another day to talk about mid and late game. Uh. 
Sorry guys, uh, I don't think we got enough time to talk about me and Red Kill. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we are just too talkative to talk even the early game, uh, also 2 hours already. And all, all, honestly speaking, the topics for this is actually quite broad, quite, quite wide. Uh. So, can't really squeeze 3 into 1. So, uh, since we tested, we already used 2 hours on the early game. So, I think we just uh, move on to the point that... Uh, 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 the Q&A, guys, Q&A, Q&A, okay? We just move on to the Q&A, okay? <coughs> so, anyway, just for those that is still blur, right? We are actually, we skipped the mid and late game part already. Because we do not have enough time, and we really apologize for that. So, uh, can, do you have any questions to ask us? Or is there any question, uh... Uh, I mean, I mean. Uh, okay. By the way, the winners of giveaway, right? Will be uh, what is it, ah? Okay, guys, the winners of the giveaway. Thanks for even supporting us and you know joining our giveaway. Please join our giveaway because our giveaway is very easy to win. It's just good diamonds, good skins. So. If I don't know, it's an I mean, epic or uh, elite skin, right? <coughs> I can't remember. I think it's an elite skin. So for this elite skin, uh, uh, <coughs> for the winners, it will be Kevin Go, Kevin Go, uh, Zach Chu, uh, Belinda Sim, Darren Koo, and Jason Yeo. So congratulations for winning the giveaway so please uh pm or whatever to the uh admin and uh tell the admin that you, you guys finally win or something so okay since we do not have any questions right uh is there any last thing you want to say ly4 nothing much lah do oh. have fun with me later in the games together oh yeah okay since mm. right since talking about that, right, let's move back to the stream, okay? So, okay, guys, we have come to the end of this workshop. Oh my god, this workshop should needs 4 hours at LI. <laughs> now we already <laughs> talked early game, we have 2 hours gone already. Okay, so guys, thanks everyone for watching these episodes. Stay tuned for the next episode on the 26th, when we will cover about something. Maybe, right, the next episode, I will not be the main coach. So we we shall wait for official news, since now uh there's a technical issue where we can't even finish the mid and late game right. So maybe <laughs> next week next next week I still have to carry on first, then maybe the next one maybe someone your idolized a lot one will come, yeah. So for those who have signed up or for the Q and A right, please head over to the Discord there. We'll be begin in roughly five to ten minutes. So join the EXP Plus mentoring voice channel. So for those who have not joined the Skip ML Discord, please check your email for instructions or use the link below. So please also stay tuned next Wednesday, uh, where Singh will be talking more about ML patches and meta change for the previous month. Lah. So then again, I think he also got one more special guest. Every time got special guest, lah, okay? So anyway, uh, stay tuned into the Skip and RG Facebook to see who is the guest, okay? So once again, this is the 5th episode of Workshop ESP Plus presented by Escape. Thanks to all of you for watching and we'll see you all on the 26th. Bye bye. Bye.